Hi, I'm Mark Peterson, fish biologist with Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife. Earlier this spring, we made a short video at Moses Lake on shore fishing for the beginning walleye angler. Today, I'd like to follow up that video with a segment on boat fishing for the beginning walleye angler. We're at Potholes Reservoir in sunny central Washington, and today we're going to be fishing with guide Shelby Ross of Ross Outdoor Adventures. Let's go find Shelby and see if we can't put some fish in the boat. Hey, Shelby. Morning, Mark. How are you doing? Great. I hear the fishing's been pretty good here at Potholes. What are we going to be using today? The fishing's been fantastic. We're going to be using a uh, uh, spinner rig with a uh, smile blade and a night crawler, a two hook rig, and we're also going to be using a slow death rig, which is just this odd bent hook with a night crawler threaded on it. No uh, beads, no spinner, no nothing, and uh, it's uh, really been doing the trick lately. Sounds simple enough. I'm pretty excited. What do you say we get out on the water and give it a try? Let's go get them. All right. them and stack them. Shelby, we've caught a couple of fish so far this morning on this uh, worm harness. Is there anything you can tell me about how to fish these as far as speed and depth and that sort of thing? Uh, we're fishing about 1.2 to 1.4 miles an hour. That seems to be the sweet spot that they like right now. Earlier in the season, we troll slower. As the water temp increases, we bump the speed up a little bit. And uh, we're trolling 25 to 38 feet. And uh, it's just rolling sand dunes up and down and the fish really like that change in depth. While we take a break from walleye fishing today, I'd like to discuss a couple of management questions we get from anglers. Oftentimes I'm asked if keeping a lot of smaller size walleye might have a negative impact on the walleye population. Anglers would like to know if they release those fish, will they end up growing to be big walleye? Well, WDFW has conducted population surveys in five walleye management waters in eastern Washington each fall for the last 11 years. So we have a lot of information on these populations. In potholes, we find that 12 to 20 inch walleye are the most abundant size classes, and this is also the pattern that we see in other walleye waters in Washington. We also find that natural mortality of these 12 to 20 inch walleye can range from 33 to 50 percent annually. So essentially, to answer the question, many of these younger walleye will die of natural causes if anglers don't harvest them. There we go. Yep. Identical to the last one. Another good walleye. I'll take those all day long. I want to take a couple minutes and talk about the setup that we're using today. And uh, we're bottom bouncing with a, uh, a slider weight system. That way the fish doesn't feel the, uh, the weight on your line. All they feel is your rod tip. And after that, a uh, good ball bearing swivel. Here I have a chain swivel because the moss will build up and, and stop your swivel from working. I've got about a four foot leader 
and uh, a Max Smile Blade and some black pearl beads and a double hook setup and you can buy these pre-tied I tie all my own and if you want to learn how to tie a snell there's lots of videos that will show you how to do it really easily but uh, you can buy them pre-tied and ready to go uh, this is the go-to technique from about the first part of April through midsummer and about midsummer it changes to a crankbait bite on most of our walleye water and we troll uh, Rapala's uh, shad wraps or uh, or flicker shads and uh, when the walleye start uh, spitting up perch in your live well or when you clean them and they're full of perch it's time to uh, switch to the crankbaits Another technique that's a lot more popular in most of the country is a jig. I think more walleye are probably caught across the country on a jig than any other technique. And it's just not the, the technique that we use here at Potholes. And, and why that is, I'm not sure, but our trolling is, is kind of the go-to method. But lots of walleye are caught on a jig and pretty much all year round you can fish a jig. And a lot of people will tip it with a night crawler. The wintertime technique is a blade bait, and uh, it's it's fish pretty similar to a jig. And uh, from oh mid November or even late October all the way through spring, the blade bait is is the technique. We were talking earlier about the importance of harvest of young walleye in our water bodies. Another question I frequently get is, what impact do walleye have on other fish species in the lake? Well, walleye are known to be a very aggressive, opportunistic predator and will prey heavily on whatever species is the most abundant. In many of our walleye waters, yellow perch are the most abundant prey species. When yellow perch decline in abundance, walleye will target other fish species that are available. So it's very important to manage the harvest of younger walleye in order to maintain strong multi-species fisheries. Our regulations allowing only one walleye over 22 inches in length help to preserve quality walleye fisheries for Washington. Even though we know the walleye regulation here on Potholes today, it's always a good idea to keep a regulation pamphlet handy in case you catch some other species that you might need to look up. the nicest fish of the day right here. Shelby, obviously we've had a great day of fishing walleye on Potholes Reservoir. I really appreciate it. I want to give a special thanks to my friend Shelby Ross of Ross Outdoor Adventures for taking us out today. Hopefully this video gives you a great start on your walleye fishing in Washington. If you'd like more information on our fall walleye index netting reports, go to wdfw.wa.gov and search publications. Thanks again for watching the video and remember, be safe and fish Washington.